Um, we are going to uh, round number five. So the question will be for you, Steve, starting out. When starting your business, would you rather overpay for talented uh, and experienced employees or save money by hiring an unexperienced employee? So we're going to, I'm going to assume in this question you're starting your business is that you're starting your very first business. And if that's the case, here's the thing. We were all crappy business owners, crappy leaders, crappy managers. It's a miracle, right? It's like the fact that we're able to make it as far as all, all of us. So uh, for me, I would rather learn my management uh, leadership skills on a lower, less exp- lower paid, less experienced employee. Because the fact of the matter is, I can't, I can't manage to keep a quality employee. I won't be able to employ a high caliber person when I'm starting because they'll look at me, they'll see the mess that I am, and bounce. All right. So for me, I would hire an inexperienced person because I wouldn't, I would be an inexperienced leader and manager. Okay. All right. Let's go over to uh, RJ. So I, I agree with what Steve said, but I am going to kind of transition that. It says when you're starting your business, so that could be starting of any business. So for example, for us, we just bought Woodhaven Country Club. That's us starting a new business. We never owned a country club before. I'm not going to go hire inexperienced people. In fact, I'm interviewing people like Tom Kite, the Jack Nicholas Club uh, company. Very, the most highly experienced companies out there that I'm going to bring in to be my golf course architect. Superintendent's going to be super experienced, high paid. So I think it just depends on where you are as an entrepreneur and then also what type of business you're starting. If you were specifically talk, talking about starting a wholesaling business and you're brand new, Steve's answer is absolutely correct. Okay. Uh, for the record, RJ, can I have a membership at the country club? <laughs> depends <laughs> on if you Stop giving my points away to Eric when I win. <laughs> All right, we'll take that as a no. Leon G. Barnes, your thoughts? I have to give it to him, RJ. Uh, that was a really good point in regards to where you are as a business owner. You know, you may be you may be a business owner and starting a new business. If the question is speaking specifically to new people starting out, you may not have the resources to hire very talented people. This is going back to the point earlier about partnerships. This is a lot of the reasons that you see people come together uh, that are talented people that are partners in the business and get equity in the business because that person can't afford them out of the gates. But if we're talking about someone that has business experience, maybe they are starting a different business. You guys know where I stand with this. I'll all day overpay for talent. I'll take four great employees and kick the ass of 12 of your employees on your other side. It's just talented people. You'll never, if they're talented, you will always get your return back on your investment. Okay. And Eric Brewer, bring us home. I think we need to, dis- we, we need to delineate the difference between skill, talent, and experience. Right. Like if you think about a lot of the answers, it was based around, you know, like what RJ say, which I happen to agree with. But I think the language creates some lack of clarity is that he's hiring experience. Experience is not an indication of talent or skill. Uh, I read in a book a long time ago where a guy said he heard someone tell him that they had 15 years worth of experience and he corrected him and said, no, you have one year of experience repeated 15 times 15 times so there's a difference between experience and skill and talent the way that the question is worded is i'm always going to go for talent and if talent doesn't have experience in the beginning it's going to be cheap so i think the way i would answer the question is i'll take talent over experience because i think you can get talent that is cheap okay the voting is now open and the floor is open gentlemen Especially in this business, to continue that point, Eric, because um, I get this question quite often is, man, should I hire someone with real estate experience? Absolutely not. You should hire the most talented person, fit the criteria, and fits your core values for your business. That's the most important thing. I think there's an exception to it, right? Like our, our RJ's is, is most people that start a business don't start a country club. <laughs> So he's got a little bit of an exception there, where, right? The margin of error when you're talking about a country club is is, is minimal. Uh, we're talking about, I mean, this, this you know this shows large part about wholesalers. The margin of error is vast. 
the barrier of entry, let's be honest, is very low. So what I look for is potential that can be developed into talent and then talent that can be developed into experience. That then becomes a very expensive person to hire. So I think when you're starting a business, be able to identify potential, develop that potential into talent, right? And you hired them cheap. But at that point, once you've developed the talent, they're an expensive employee um, that would cost someone else a lot to, to hire. And to, to that point, when Steve put together the panel for this show, he didn't go looking for experience that might have been part of it, but he looked for a particular skill set, right? Um, and other than, than, than RJ, none of us are cheap, right? He's the only one that's drastically <laughs> underpaid. Every one of us is, is, is being handsomely rewarded um, other than RJ, which is why I sent him the the pity gift of the titanium and he loves it. It's like a gavel in the, the hand of a judge. That's amazing. Okay. Going to your point, Eric, though, about getting cheap talent. I always worry if I'm hiring someone that's super talented, but they're cheap. I'm wondering what is the underlying reason as to why this person is this talented and I'm getting on this cheap, I guess, because what you're saying is, is, they might not have the experience. And so you're the one that's like kind of discovering the talent. It's what, yeah, that's, that's what, there's one of two reasons. Either they, they, they identify you as a person that can accelerate their ability to get the experience or two, they, they're talented and they, they are, they are currently under horrible leadership. So they're willing to give up not the right a environment large portion of their income for a, a greater purpose and clarity and direction. And but when we say cheap, it's all relative, right? Like to get an acquisitions agent in our market, if they make six figures, that's inexpensive. Um, but that I think those are the two things. They're, they're looking at you going, I'm gonna work for, I mean, I've had people, I don't know about you, but they message me all the time and say, I'll come work for you for free for the experience. It doesn't get any yep. cheaper than free, right? And they're talented people, but they're paying for access and rather and, and rather than paying for it, they're sacrificing some income potential. Hey, Weasel, I think this question just kind of spurred a good question for next week, which is should salary, should compensation be set as a company or should it be determined based off of who you're hiring? No, I think that's kind of part of this conversation is yeah. Because, I mean, honestly, as a company, we kind of have set pay structure already. We're not really changing it based off of who we're hiring. I think that's a great point. Also, I mean, I just can't get this out of my head, right? Like, if you were to look at the prototypical country club owner, I for sure had RJ Bates in my mind. Like, did anyone... <laughs> he looks more like a country club employee than owner. <laughs> one, one hell of a maintenance man. He can I, went from, one man I went from the best of them. Listen, I went from country club employee at seven dollars and twenty five cents an hour to the owner. Okay, that's he phenomenal. looks like the guy that he looks like the guy that bought the country club because he was in the longest driving competition and he won that a couple of times and it allowed him to buy the country club. It looks like the longest driver guy. A couple of sponsorship deals. <laughs> Speaking of sponsorships, uh, we would like to uh, shout out this week's sponsor, which was, well, nobody. So, RJ, maybe the country club can break it to that marketing budget <laughs> and, you know, throw us a little bit of change for PTD. Uh, RJ, the, I got a question for you. You definitely, I, I, I think you can tell a lot about the type of clubs a guy swings. You play golf? I do. You swing King Cobras? I do not. Oh, you got a King Cobra look to you. What do you swing? Callaways. All right. Fair enough. And they're made from titanium. <laughs> yes. Nice. Out there. I should have known. All right. Yep. <laughs> Well, the voting is uh, voting is concluded, and it looks like R.J. Bates took that one. So another point for R.J. 